let's state something very obvious. Russian Federation is a mess. They have president who is an ex-KGB officer in charge and who claims to be anti-communist. But every city in Russian Federation has Lenin statue. Russian armed forces are boasting red army flags and red stars. Additionally, Russian Orthodox Church is increasingly becoming a political tool that stopped communication with almost all other Orthodox churches. In our previous video, we analyzed why are Romanovs not in power and what is the main problem to monarchism in Russia. Today's topic is, can monarchy fix Russia? To an increasing degree, ever since the fall of the horrid Soviet Union, nostalgia has been growing around the Romanov dynasty. Peaks come on several occasions, particularly the reburial of the remains of Tsar Nicholas II and his family, as well as the canonization of the last Tsar, Tsarina, and their family as martyrs for the Russian Orthodox faith. And recently, in the 2021, the first Romano wedding in Russia since 1917, when Grand Duke George Mikhailovich Romanov married his Italian fiancée Rebecca Virginia Bettarini at St. Isaac's Cathedral at St. Petersburg in front of a dozen of royal guests. However, what has lately been more troublesome, no, sick, from a monarchy standpoint is that ex-KGB officer President Putin while using the Soviet brutal doctrine to start wars with neighboring countries, annex lands and literally put Lenin statues in occupied cities, is using Tsars from the past to justify his decisions. This is madness. What he is doing here is exactly the same strategy he is using in past decades when he worked to make republicanism in Russia seem acceptable to monarchists and water down the need of the people to bring back the monarchy that was violently taken from them by Bolsheviks. Putin is here taking the wide view of Russia with no real distinction for the Tsarist era, the Soviet era or the Federation era, but the fact remains that he has not broken with the republican government nor he has managed to stop the Communist Party from remaining the second most powerful political force in the country and communist traditions alive in all spheres of society. Russia today, in reality, is still the country run by Bolshevik thugs, a bit more educated than their counterparts in 1917. This political elite is allowing Orthodox Church to operate within Russia borders. Unfortunately, this Orthodox Church managed to get isolated from almost all other Orthodox Churches and end up into de facto schism. So, is there an alternative to Bolshevism hidden behind cosmetics in Russia? In past decade, Her Imperial Highness, Grand Duchess Maria Vladimirovna, has gained an ever higher profile and even many who would not actively support monarchical restoration have come to the conclusion that such a thing would not be so harmful. Constitutional monarchy is a common framework in Western Europe where monarchs are incapable of doing harm due to their lack of political power and can only be a help to the country and people of Russia by bringing stability, continuity and unity. Think of someone who is not owing political office to gerrymandering, political schemes and deals with donors. Think of someone free to question policies and prime ministers, freely review laws without thinking about what signing means for their re-election next year, and finally as a long-standing ambassador to other countries. In such restored monarchy Tsar or Tsarina would reign while the prime minister democratically elected would rule according to laws created in an independent parliament. This would probably be the best that can be immediately hoped for in Russia today, as many have already said that the autocracy is back in all but name, in the person of current president Vladimir Putin. In the absence of autocracy, things would not magically change. 
but it would be a huge step in the right direction and a major statement not just to Russia putting to rest the nightmare that was the Bolshevik revolution but also to the entire world which followed the criminal communist example from Cuba to North Korea. One example of successful transition from brutal dictatorship to democracy with help of the constitutional monarchy is Kingdom of Spain. The King of Spain was active in his support for Spain's transition to parliamentary democracy after a civil war and a 40-year dictatorship. The restored king was able to bridge the gap between reformists and democratic movements and old military, clerical and economical elites. The king's traditional legitimacy reassured the old elites and enabled him to stabilize democratic institutions. When following the election of the first socialist government, the new democracy was threatened by an attempt of military coup, King appeared on television, ordered the troops back to their barracks and defended the constitution. We hope that all people in Russia, citizens, politicians, professors, bus drivers, everyone, will start thinking of constitutional monarchy as a way to fix their system and give their country a chance to be a positive participant in the future. Future without cold or world wars. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to help us with the algorithm by clicking like and leaving a comment below. And don't forget to watch this video where we are discussing three reasons why our monarchy is not restored.